everybody for joining our very first tips and tricks session. My name is Liz Moyer. I am the REDCap team lead. We are recording these sessions and we can post them on our REDCap wiki and folks can get this information even if they don't come to our tips and tricks. All right, so the goal of all our tips and tricks session is to expand our, your REDCap skills and the knowledge your knowledge base. The format for all our tips and tricks sessions are going to be a demonstration followed by a Q&A and then we'll uh, post a link of the video on our tips and tricks tips and tricks page in the Red Cap Wiki. So some housekeeping, please stay muted, please don't share video and then post your questions in chat and after the demonstration we'll queue up your questions and answer any questions. So today we're going to be talking about custom labels uh, specifically the custom record label, the custom event label, and the repeating form label, and also the secondary unique ID. We picked um, all these labels because labels are very easy advanced customizations to add some pertinent data to pages in your REDCap project where you're reviewing records. To set up any of the labels or to set up the custom uh, or secondary unique ID, you will need um, projects design and setup rights. And you'll also need to know how to get variable names and how advanced syntax works in REDCap. So let's jump into the project that I created for our demo today. And the first thing I want to do is just talk about how to get variable names. Uh, there are a couple different ways you can get your variable names. I often just come over to the code book. It's the easiest way for me to see all the variable names. So if I click on the code book and everybody has actually access to the code book, whether or not you have projects set up in design rights, and your variable names are here in this first column called variable name, field name. So you can see your variable name, that's the field label, and that's the attributes. So uh, what we'll be working with are variable names like first underscore name, last underscore name. Um, I think the other one we'll work with is visit date. So that's an easy way. I think the easiest way to get your variable names, uh, especially when you're in production, if you set some stuff up after production. But the other way you could get your variable names, let's go over to project setup in our online designer, is you could just click in a form and in that form here, you could see the variable name. You know, if you open up the field to be edited, you could get the variable name. Okay, so let's first set up a custom record label. So when you are navigating around looking at records in REDCap, you know, you're here on your ad edits page and you're looking at all the records. And I have auto numbering turned on for the unique ID here. Um, so when you're here looking at your records, when you're over here looking at an individual record, or when you're over here, say, in a report, you know, the record is identified to you by the record ID. And so that is by default the record label in REDCap. And especially when you have something like auto numbering turned on, it can be very hard to determine who somebody is. And when you're doing any kind of perspective um, data collection, or say you are doing um, surveys and you have um, save and return turned on, so you want to be able to easily get codes back to people. You know, just having a record ID can make it really challenging to find people. So the custom record label is a real easy way to add some data to the label. It won't add data to the actual ID, it just adds it to the label to make records easier to identify while you're looking at, a, at them in REDCap. So let's go over to our project setup tab. And well, first let's think about the, the data that we wanna add to our label. And I'm gonna add the first and last name. So when I jump over to the code book and just double check what my variable names are. So my variable names are first underscore name, last underscore name. I'm gonna jump over to my project setup tab and I'm gonna go down to these additional customizations. I'm gonna click on my additional customization and check the box to enable this custom record label. And then for advanced syntax, I just take my variable name and I put it in a square bracket. So last underscore name, comma, first underscore name. So that is uh, how I use advanced syntax and um, I'm gonna basically be piping the participants first and last name into my record label. I'm gonna enclose this in parentheses 
which is optional, but I'll make it a little bit easier to read while I'm navigating around and looking at records and red caps. So now let's go look back at our at edit home page. Again, it makes it much easier to see who I'm entering data on or interact with the record. You know, if Bruce Wayne, I, Batman's coming in, I have a much easier time of figuring out Bruce Wayne is ID 17. So the custom record label, very easy customization. Uh, I think it adds a lot of value to almost any project. The next label we're going to set up is an event label. So sometimes it's really helpful to know some additional information, high level information about the event, you know, in a prospective study, maybe you want to know the date that they were here for their last visit. If they had some unscheduled visits, maybe you want to know the date of their last visit. So we can append some data, just like we did to the um, record label, to the event label. So let's go over to our events. Well, first again, let's go back to our code, back, code book and let's go get the variable name for our visit date. Visit underscore date. Go back to project setup and let's go over here to define events. So I'm gonna go over here and in all my um, events where I have assigned the visit form, I'm going to add the visit date label. So under custom event label, I'm gonna put visit date, the variable name in these square brackets. Save. Save. Now because you can't edit events after your project goes to production, you can't make this kind of edit in production. So um, leave yourself a note to do these kind of editing while you're in development. You could add a custom record label when you're in production like we just did. Oh, I have a cat. I, if you heard my cat, just meow. I also have dogs and my dogs might start barking. If it's untenable, I'll mute myself for a second. All right, so let's see how this is working. Let's go look at record one, Jane Eyre. So here is where the date that was collected on this visit form at this um, event is being piped. I've got my visit date, visit date, visit date. And I think it's really helpful here with these unscheduled visits. So that is the event label, you know, very helpful um, when you have some temporal, especially when you have some temporal aspect tied to your visits or events. Then the next thing I want to set up is I want to set up a label for these repeating, uh, this repeating form for my concomitant meds because I want to better be able to look at this record and see well what meds have they already reported. Uh, by default, REDCap just gives me the instance of the repetition. So I've filled out this concomitant meds form four times for Jane Eyre, but I want to see what meds she's reported. So how do we do that? Again, let's go back to the code book and let's grab the variable name. I really want to see the medication name. Let me actually collapse all these instruments, which makes it easier to find the form, which is concomitant meds. I'll expand it. And the variable name I want is cm underscore med. So I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to come back over here to project setup. And I'm going to go into my repeatable instruments and events. And over here on concomitant meds, because this form is repeating by itself, I'm going to add a label to this form. cm med. Now again, um, editing repeating forms is locked down when you go to production, so you want to make this kind of edit while you're in development. All right, let's go back and look at Jane Eyre's record, record number one, and see if we can get a list of her meds. That's more helpful. Here I must not have filled out the med, but let's go add another one so you can see how that's working. Let's say Jane Eyre has some heartburn and she's taking a Meprazole. But we won't fill out the rest of the form in the interest of time. 
but now you can see that down here. You know, and your, your, la your label could be a string of things. You could add more than one um, variable to your label. So you could maybe hear what would be helpful is if I added the medication name and the date she reported it. That could be helpful. So you could string together a series of variables for any of these labels. So that's the custom record label. That's the event label we saw up here. So here's my custom record label, my event label, and here's where I added my repeating form label. Really easy customizations um, that provide a lot of value. And again, the repeating form label, the event label, you need to get those set up while you're in development. I'm pretty sure you can set up a custom record label even when you're in production. All right, so then the last thing I want to talk about is how to set up a secondary unique ID and really why you might want to set up a secondary unique ID. So um, there are really two reasons why I see people set up secondary unique IDs. The first is, you know, they often are, <clears throat> have a lot of people they're screening, but then uh, a study is only enrolling a portion of those. Um, and so they maybe have a screening ID and then they have a study ID or auto numbering is turned on because maybe you're recruiting from the public by you have a, a link that you've posted somewhere. And again, once you've recruited somebody and they get enrolled, you wanna give them an ID that's more meaningful than the auto numbered ID that Red Cap assigns. And that's what I've done here. If we go back and look at this project, auto numbering is turned on for the ID, but I have this perspective study. So, you know, this auto numbered ID, one, two, three, four, five, six, as, and it goes on in ascending order as I add new participants is not very helpful to me. And we are creating study IDs. And I wanna assign that study ID and make sure uniqueness gets enforced. So I've already created a feel for the study ID. Let's go back to the code book. I'll collapse these again. And we can see over here, I believe in enrollment and demographics, I have this study ID field. So I wanna make sure that the data in here is unique, meaning um, a study ID can be entered once, and then that same study ID could not be assigned to another participant. So let's go over here again to our additional customizations and let's designate a secondary unique ID. Now it's gonna give you a drop down of fields that are collected at the first event. So I'll pick study ID. And now let's go see how that works. We'll do a little data entry to test it out. So let me go to Jane Eyre and give Jane Eyre the study ID of S101 or S100, that's what we'll try. I haven't entered any IDs yet, so I'm not getting any kind of prompts that are saying anything about uniqueness. But if I go to another record, let's go to the second record here, Philip Marlowe, and try to give Philip the same ID. Say I forgot I already signed S100, so I try S100 again, and I should get a note that says, hey, this is a duplicate value, and you're gonna have to enter something that's unique here. Um, or you can't go on and do any more data entry. So remove this or correct it. So if I S101, it will save. So that's how you set up and use a secondary unique ID. And those are the use cases that we've encountered for the secondary unique ID. <clears throat> so those are our demonstrations for today's tips and tricks. Does anybody have any questions? I'm happy to, if you shout um, a note or if you say something in chat, I'm happy to unmute you and you can ask your question. Or if anybody's used these and has anything they want to share with anyone else. Oh, well, that's great. Glad to hear it was helpful. All right. Well, again, we're keeping our tips and tricks sessions pretty informal um, and um, we'll keep them pretty short. If no one has any questions, then we'll just wrap up our tip, first tips and tricks sessions. Thanks for attending. You can let anybody else you know that uses RedCap that will be posting this video so they can find that same information. Um, we'll post a link to it on our wiki page. Thanks, Savannah, Christina, and Monica for attending. We'll see you at the next tips and tricks session, hopefully.